All right, I'm gonna start. I would love to be Middle East, like any country in the Middle East. I think it would be so fun there. It's here. You just go in and destroy it. All right, so we're gonna talk about neurons and synapses. Now, this is a pretty dense lesson. So in this case, I'm thinking about splitting this into two lessons or so. And I am yes. going to do that. I get one. So excited. Um, that's our class. All right, we're very excited. You're going to be excited with us already. All right, let's hear it. That's a mark scheme of some tests. I don't know which one. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, what is the next one? Let's hear a comment on this video. Like and comment and subscribe for more videos like this. Does anyone ever read Miss Roquette's Twitter? No. no. It is so funny. We shouldn't talk about this on a recorded video. Yeah, it's not no, I'm, it's not. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. all incriminating. I'm saying I follow Miss Roquette's Twitter. Yeah, I, I love it. I what? love his Twitter. Do you know how plastic surgery works? Say again? Not plastic surgery, but just plastic surgery. How would you get your nose to be small and like this? Oh, I know this. Okay, they split it down the center, then they open it up, and they break the bones. They cut small flaps into the jaw, uh, then cover it over, and that's why it takes six months to heal because you break your nose in order to be getting a like, rhinoplasty. Let's continue. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are some shapes. Okay, okay, so, excuse me. Hi. Hi. I do. So, neurons. Now, the whole thing is this. Keep in mind. Uh, yes, we haven't talked, you guys haven't learned about the nervous system and neurons before, so in this case we're going to start from scratch. So in this case, uh, think of this whole thing as we start to talk about signals, right? Your body is a huge system, there's a huge organism, one part of it has to be able to communicate with the other part of the body so that information and messages can get across. So you learn about a different types of signal in your body before. What was it? Neurosignal. Oh, hormonic signal. Hormones. Hormones. Yeah, you're right. Hormones. And hormones is a chemical signal. It's a little light. It's a chemical signal. Hormones are chemical signal. And in this case, you are talking about a chemical signal that is uh, Slow, but long lasting. Okay? Slow, but long lasting. Now, when we talk about the nervous system and neurons, you are talking about an electrical signal. Okay? Electrical signal. So, um, the nervous system. This is electrical signal. It's fast. It doesn't last that long at all, but a lot of times uh, you just need that little instantaneous information. Okay. Fast, not long lasting, not long lasting, or low duration, you can say that way. But your body needs both systems to work together so that you can do what you can do. Yes. We were talking about like MS and how like the nervous, like the electrical yeah. signals cut off. We'll talk about that too. Mm -hmm. We'll mention that too. Now, uh, to get to get started first, a biology at this point is very much like storytelling. You kind of do need to know the players as well as the layout of the land, so to speak. So before we start the notes. Here's a video. Now, th this video we're going to start and stop a few uh, times and places so, uh, because it sort of help us. So, we're going to start with this video. We're going to start with a little. Nerve impulse is an electrical current that travels along dendrites or axons due to ions moving through voltage gated channels in the neuron's plasma membrane. Voltage-gated channels open and close in response to an electrical voltage, so they are affected by changes in electrical charge around them. When a neuron is at rest, a charge difference is maintained between the ins... I'm going to pause here. Please. Now. 
This is a nerve cell. This is a typical nerve cell. There are other specialized ones. We don't need to know for the, for the scope of this course. This is just a generalized nerve cell. So it's pretty long. You have a cell body here. Now, usually in the typical nerve cell, you have one really long branch, which you call axon. But you have little hair like projections, which you call dendrites. Now, dendrites are the part that seems to uh, receive the information for the nerve cell. And then the axon is the part that the nerve cell sends the signal to wherever it is. So the axon terminus, it could be uh, towards a muscle group. So in this case, this neuron will be responsible for a contraction of muscles or whatnot. It could be connected to another nerve cell. Good so far? So the axon transports <coughs> the, the signal? The signal okay. to wherever it is. So axon terminus might be to a muscle cell, could be another nerve cell, many possible kinds. Now, one part here, this part here, the axon is important. Um, the axon is important because, and there are a lot of these little things here. Now, due to, due to the other class, I learned how to pronounce certain names differently. So, now I'm going to draw the, just the axon itself. So, on axon, Uh, this is the axon itself, but as you see on the diagrams here, you have a whole bunch of these. Now, apparently in German, W is pronounced V, so it's von cells. Von cells. So, von cells. Now, von cells are made of. Spann, thank you. Spann cells. I don't know. I, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm I would say Spann. Spann. I, I think that I think the it's the most German. aggressive. That's what it sounds like. So it's, like, it's the most aggressive. Spann cells. <coughs> they are made up of myelin. Okay. Spann cells. They're made of myelin. Made up of myelin. Now myelin, as it's written over here. It's an insulating layer of fat, whitey tissue around the axon. Okay? Melanin? Myelin. No, myelin. Myelin. Oh, myelin. Myelin. M. You're so off. M-Y-E-L-I-N. Okay? Not myelin. No one has a scarf today. I don't know, some people have a scarf. So imagine, oh yeah, good. This, this. So imagine your, this, this is an axon, and I have a lot of these, and this is a spun cell, okay? So these are the myelin sheet, the spun cells, each of them is a Okay, and you have a number. Now, if it is fatty acid, if it is layer of fat, so to speak, mm -hmm. does fat conduct electricity? Mm -hmm. No. No, they don't. So in this case, what happens is this? Because these do not conduct electricity, your electrical impulse would jump. It would jump. So let me find a different color. That's what uh, that seems to be what Alex from the other class and I think Amelia said spun cells. So, so electrical impulse. Right? Now these gaps in between the spun cells are called nodes of Rambier. Okay. Uh, what? Zach's not having any word rather than a Nodes of Renvier. Daiko Tai Okay? I think French pronunciation is Renvier. So in this case, the electrical impulse 
instead of, now, because the myelin sheet are our fatty acid, which does not conduct electricity, so the Hi. impulse. Schwannin cells. Not oh, close. So, look up here. I'm going to use this pink marker. So, in this case, the electrical signal, because these are blocking, or these are not conducting the electricity, the Schwannin cells. So, in this case, instead of going all along the surface like this, it jumps. It jumps over the nodes of Renvier. Oh, no, it jumps over the Schwann cells, the myelin sheath, and go on to the next. The, the electrical signal? Yeah, the electrical impulse. Okay. So the electrical impulse jumps past over the nodes of Renvier. No, no, jumps over the myelin sheath, or the Schwann cells, go to the next node of Renvier. How is that efficient, though? How is that efficient? It's like a wavelength, right? It's kind of like wavelength, but instead of going through every single bit of the membrane, it just jumps. Because of that, it cuts down the, on the distance travel. Mm -hmm. How though? Wouldn't like, the like, those circumference be less than the diameter? Maybe it'd be more than it's the not diameter. huge. Those things are not huge. And when I say jump, we're not like talking about physical jump. Uh, okay. So in this case, look up here. So so, in now in so in this case on page two, this process of the electrical impulse jumping over the Schwann cells and hence conduct the impulse a lot faster. This is actually called solitary conduction. Solitary conduction, and on the bottom part here. Because it can jump between the nodes of Renvier, which is known as solitary conduction, the conducting, the impulse conducting is much faster than continuous transmission, up to 100 meter per second. Okay, up to 100 meter per second. So it's improving the speed by that much. So if you think about Usain Bolt. He runs 100 meter, what, nine seconds or eight? That's, 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 that's fast. That's fast. This is per second. Right? By having the myelin sheet on those Schwann cells there, you're improving that transmission by that much faster. So if, if James, if, 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 he, if he could run nine times faster, he would be the speed of an impulse, uh, the electrical impulse? I don't know, it would be well, nine times faster, but if you shave it down to that, yeah. That's insane. Now, um, also another thing is this. Now, Ruby brought up MS. Multiple cirrhosis. How many people know someone who was affected by multiple cirrhosis? I do. I do. Yeah. They brought in people. I just get to What? Family, family friend. When did this family friend start showing symptoms? Like 46. When that person's 46? Yeah. That's later than that. Okay. Any other people know of people who? They had to get the program. Like the family friends and um, at my old school, they I made mean, there was like a whole thing about that where they would bring people with MS in. So like the jump for MS. Yeah. 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 Jump for hard. You jump for hard. That's yeah, jump for hard. That we used to raise money for like people with MS. Okay, so did that person? When did they they start showing symptoms? It, it seemed like they got it when they were like middle age, which is kind of. They always used to bring people in that were like close to our age, like twenty nine. Yeah. But um, my family friend got like only started showing like real symptoms. Like it was like much more minor when she was like. Early yeah, like my mom, one of her good friends, her mom has MS and she's like, uh, apparently like my mom's friends had to start taking care of her when she was like more middle-aged and not like when she was younger. So I think it might have gone like much worse by the time she reached like an older age, but it's first started to show when she was younger. Okay. Now normally, normally multiple cirrhosis, MS, people start showing symptoms in the early 20s, and sometimes even teens. 
Um, there is a, there is a, so it, it's one of those uh, neural uh, degenerative disease which affects young people. Um, so in this case, there is a genetic factor. We don't really know why, what causes MS. There seems to be a genetic factor. There seems to be a, a location factor. Like where were you when during the puberty? The further away you are from equator, the more likelihood there is. Mm -hmm. no, no one knows why. Um, so are those are the two things I can remember. What? Are people in Greenland just crawling the mess? Mm, not that to that extent, but compared to like if you spend your uh, puberty, let's just say, in Singapore, which is much closer to the equator, there's lower incidence. Um, so in this case, people with MS, generally what happened is that these Schwann cells and these monosheath are actually disappearing. They're, uh, they're either damaged or disappearing. So in this case, it does affect, um, it does affect the transmission of impulse. So this solitary conduction will be strongly affected, which in this case, a lot of times, their uh, muscle tone, the ability to control their muscles and sometimes how clear they can think what are being affected too and it goes remission and relapse it's a it's an interesting to study but it's interesting to study and complicated but it's tragic too i'm certain you're talking about how it affects human people are we okay with this so far yeah. so this is basically what are what are what is the neuron and how the neuron generally works from there? Now, in this case, we're going to talk about uh, how the neuron affects uh, transmit in uh, information. So there is this part here. We're going to add, add a lot of stuff here, but before we do that, let's watch a little bit of this video. Okay, uh, Anthony, can you get the lights, please? Just the front row because. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Gracias. Ron is at rest. A charge difference is made so they are affected by changes in electrocuted channels open and close in response to an electrical voltage. So they are affected by changes in electrical charge around them. When a neuron is at rest, a charge difference is maintained between the inside and outside of the cell. This charge difference is produced and maintained largely by active transport using sodium-potassium pumps. The pumps send sodium ions out of the cell and bring potassium ions in. While other channels allow some flow of potassium ions back out of the cell, the sodium ions cannot easily get back in to replace the lost positive charges. The overall result is that the exterior of the cell has a net positive charge and the interior has a net negative charge. The difference in charge between the interior and exterior of the cell is called the resting membrane potential. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. So, at the end of resting potential, you have positive on the outside of the membrane and negative on the inside of the membrane. Now we're gonna go deeper than this. We're gonna go deeper than this. So, um, this here. So we're gonna go deeper than this. So in this case, we're gonna look at, now this handout have a link to this website. You, you don't need to go, go there. We're gonna do it together as a class. So, let me take a look. I accidentally gave my <laughs> my copy away, which I bought the answers. Oh, any of you guys have it? Do any of you guys have a copy which have like tons of things written on this part here? Yeah. Zach, Eric, oh, what? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This. This. No, I'll check the no, 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 no. Do you, is your hard copy? Does it have things written here? Uh, no. No. Okay. Somehow I gave mine away, so 
So in this case, this page here. I would have it. I don't, but I would. This page here. The most important membrane pump is the sodium potassium pump. Right here. So the most important pump here is the sodium potassium pump. Write that down. Uh, what, look at what my, where my cursor is. But where would that be on the diagram? I don't see it. Huh? Page three. I don't see a pump. Here. On the note, this block, fill in the blanks. The first one? Yeah. Sodium potassium pump. Yeah, the sodium potassium pumps. Pumps, look at this here. How many sodium out and how many potassium in? Oh, three sodium, sorry, three sodium go in and two potassium. The other way, the other way. Two, two go in, three come out. Three sodium out, two potassium in. Oh, okay. Okay. So, that's your second line. Second line, sodium potassium pumps, pumps three sodium out, two potassium in. This energy is provided by? ATP. ATP or hydrolysis of ATP. Okay, hydrolysis of ATP. Okay. So as you can see here, I'm gonna click on this animation. Come on. What? Pumping, it's just wrong. Yeah. It's a flower. I don't know what I need it. <laughs> well, I actually can't look at it. There's something so wrong about it. I don't see. I don't think okay. So, as a result, so as a result, what do you have up here? As a result, the concentration of sodium is higher. Outside. Higher outside, and, and the concentration of potassium is higher inside because they're like. You know, it's stuff. Good, so write that down, fill that, fill in those blanks. The concentration of N is what? After the what comes what? As a result, the concentration of sodium is higher outside the cell, and the concentration of potassium is higher inside the cell. Okay? I'm going to forget this in a Did you fill this in? Yeah. Okay, so, you need to review. Mm -hmm. Because of the unequal distribution, Wait, is it cumulative right into okay. what? Is it cumulative? Oh, we'll talk about it. Okay, so like we we'll company. talk, let us finish. Uh, I would because have of that. the unequal distribution of ions, the outside becomes more salty. What is it? More positive. Positive, thank you. Okay, the positive charge on the outside of the membrane attracts negatively charged anions. Thank you. On the oh. inside of the membrane, the membrane starts to polarize. Okay, good. So you should have positive anions and polarize. That's a more point. Outside positive, negative charge anions starts to polarize. What does the memory start to do? Polarize. So, because there's so much more sodium outside, the anions are going to start going to the bottom part of this, and you start having a charge difference between the outside of the membrane and inside the membrane. You start to. Now the next point, because you also have something called the resting sodium, no, uh, resting potassium channel. So what do you notice here? Do you, what, which one have higher concentration of uh, potassium? Inside. Inside, so in this case, potassium will start flowing out. When the yellow is inside, right? Yellow is inside, yes. So in this case, for, for the next point, potassium pumps outside, flows. flows out of the cell through the resting channel along its increase. Concentration increasing the number of 
positive charge, positive charge on the outside of this membrane. Okay, so flows out of the cell, increasing the positive charges. So you actually even more polarize. After that, the sodium ions move into the cell, which brings to the resting potential. Did I miss something? Yeah, I missed something. Is that you know you literally put 
so hard on it. Didn't you have like 18,000 words? I'm really nervous. Um, I had to cut it down. I, 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 yeah, I, I, that's I, that's I, like a dissertation. But I was like, you know what I find a bit funny? You talk about an extended essay where you have 18,000 words, but it's it's hard. I'm like, that's a joke. Hello, yes. hello. I know, but extended essays a lot. Because, I mean, like, you're excuse me, not you. Because we have a little bit more time, I'm going to go over one more thing. And we can talk about it. Uh, we can revisit the action potential. So right now we have this thing called resting potential. The idea of resting potential is right now your neuron, the surface of your neuron, is primed and ready to receive a stimulus to and then to pass on the signal. Does alcohol and other drugs hinder stimuli? Uh, yes. Response. Yes. Wait, I actually do have a question about that. Oh, yes. Sure do we have to know about different receptors? Because there are different receptors for neurons. Like, um, aren't there like specific receptors for, I don't know, alcohol or different like um, substances? Like, it's not, it's not like you're bred to be able to like intake alcohol. It's that your liver breaks it down through neurological components. No, but there's different types of receptors for each other on that word. Like, I yeah. think, if I remember correctly, like, I know it's being video game, but as I said, like, I don't remember. But I think if we do the neurobiology or neurology yeah. option, there might be a little bit more to talk okay, about. Yeah. That's why like over there, Ms. So Park, Ms. Ms. Park, they're talking about the mouse party activity. That's one part talking about how different drugs affect the brain and that's actually. Yeah. Um, okay, so there are cells that are meant for you to develop heroin. Not develop heroin to accept. But like your body isn't built to accept heroin. What about okay? How about think of this? Cannabinoid receptors. Those are for specific guys for guys for guys for weed. Guys, ruby, exactly. Talk about this more. Of the cell is called the resting membrane potential. A nerve impulse begins when a stimulus disturbs the plasma membrane on a dendrite, causing sodium channels to open. Sodium ions flow into the cell, lessening the charge difference at that location. If the change is enough, it will cause nearby voltage-gated sodium channels to open. This allows so many sodium ions to flood into the cell at that location that the membrane there is depolarized with the local region inside the cell having a net positive charge and the outside of the cell having a net negative charge. This affects neighboring voltage-gated sodium channels which then open, moving the depolarization along the membrane. This moving depolarization is called an action potential. Changes occur behind the action potential to restore the resting membrane potential. The voltage-gated sodium channels close and voltage-gated potassium channels open. This allows a rapid flow of potassium ions out of the cell, repolarizing the membrane so that the inside is again negative and the outside positive. This is followed by use of sodium-potassium pumps to fully restore the resting membrane potential and to re-establish proper concentrations of sodium and potassium ions inside and outside the cell.
action potential. So action potential, now so you look at this diagram or this frame here of the video, this frame on the video, yellow would be resting potential. Trucking should not be solid with two K's. I'm sorry. Now, look over here. Look over here. One second. Uh huh. Senderismo. Senderismo. Figure. 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 Excuse me, what do you notice about the charge difference in the actual potential, during action potential? Purple. This is resting potential. Yellow is resting potential. But it's positive everywhere? It's positive, positive, not everywhere. During action potential, what happens? It's positive. On the inside. Positive on the inside, negative on the outside. Negative on the outside. Coming on. She's a should we be writing this on our definition? Uh, maybe right on the side. I'm so worried about Spanish. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be So, there are three phases in nerve impulse. Guys, shh. Resting potential, we have action potential, and then you have green here. This screen here, uh, we call it the refractory period. Refractory period. We don't have anywhere to write refractory period. No definition for that. No, just make it right on the side here like this. In this bottom part. Okay. So the refractory period. Now, what do you notice about the refractory period in terms of charges? It's like both. Both. Positive and negative. Can you describe? What do you mean both? Like the positive and negative on the outside and positive and negative. Where's the C? Where's, do you say the negative? Everywhere else. The green. Oh, the green. Okay. Oh, negative. Negative where? For some reason. Inside. She has to point. Negative inside. Positive, positive and negative inside. How is that compared to? The resting potential, which is yellow, and action potential, which is red. How is it? That's red. Or pink, yeah, or purple, right. or whatever it's you call it. Same as action. Same as what? Action. Are you sure? Oh, same yeah, it's resting. Yeah. Resting, I'm sorry. You're just making every single possible guess. <laughs> but what yes, else? it is the same, charges wise. This is over general, generalized. Um, this is the same as the resting potential. Refractory period is actually a time where your nerve, your neuron is trying to go back to the resting potential. Okay? So it's trying to go back to the resting potential. Okay? Yeah. Trying to go back to resting potential. Because if you think about it, resting potential, your neurons are primed to receive stimulus and send out the charge, send out the impulse. Refractory period is, yeah, I'm not quite ready to do that. I'm trying to get back to where it was. Okay. Okay. Now that video just now talked about what happened during action potential? What happened during action potential? And what happened during the refractory period? Uh, what I'm going to ask you all to do is this. Next, to homework first. Homework is you will need to go to, not you try a question, go to the handout here. There are a lot of definitions of terms, especially here. 
about the resting membrane potential click on each one. Go to this website about the neuron net. Use Toronto. Use Firefox and enable Flash to get these terms and definitions. That's one thing. And second thing, next lesson there will be an entrance ticket on resting potential. Yes. Just on resting potential. Yeah. You need to be able to tell me all the steps about resting potential. I'm chunking everything down. Okay. Resting potential. What does that mean? Sausage. It's a food. In it's what a language? Spanish. What's it for? Like where they eat? They're eating the. Where they eat? Uh, where they eat that sausage? It's a sounds... typical restaurant. Oh, it sounds. It sounds almost like like at any restaurant they serve sausage. No, no. In, in, in the picture, they talk about it. I feel like crap. Honestly, doesn't matter. Yes. So, yeah. homework is to get all these oh, definitions here yeah. and prepare for. Entrance ticket, which is next lesson, uh, it will be on resting potential. Now, I'm going to stop this, and I need to quickly use the bathroom, and then we'll ha I'll hand back to you the.